So it's time to respond to Brian Johnson's 2025 longevity protocol. Three years ago, I asked the most unthinkable and crazy question possible. Are we the first generation that won't die? To explore this question, I hired a team of 30 medical professionals. We measured the biological age of every one of my organs, and then we applied the very best science ever done. On Just remember this, that Brian Johnson is considered the most measured man in human history. On health span and lifespan. It's worked. I now have the best biomarkers of anybody in the world. I am the healthiest person on planet Earth. That's a big claim to say that he's the healthiest person on planet Earth. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down below in the comments section. And while the protocol is always changing, this is what I'm doing. Now. How do you define health? Is it purely just based on biomarkers or do you consider some other subjective verification and quantifying methods? <laughs> Every day begins for me, not when I wake up, but when I go to bed, as sleep is my number one life priority. I really do respect that. He's saying that sleep is his number one priority. I guess anyone looking to optimize their health needs to consider sleep as the number one, first and foremost, highest leverage influencing factor on your overall sleep quality. So overall life quality, that is. So definitely prioritizing sleep as the you know, really powerful way to support your overall health. I'm asleep by 8.30 p.m. and I naturally wake around 5 a.m. So most people that I know would struggle to go to bed at 8.30 p.m. and get up by 5 a.m. But the fact that he's able to do this is pretty impressive. Never using an alarm. The very first thing I do- And he mentions he never uses an alarm. This is something that I also believe in. I think this is a beneficial thing. I think if we wake up with an alarm, it, we can get more of a, a stress response upon wakening. So just be careful of this. What I do when I wake up is I get 10,000 lux light into my eyes for three to four minutes. This is something that I literally did this morning when I woke up because it was still dark outside. I got up at 5.30 a.m. I needed to use really bright artificial lights to help stimulate the body to wake up to hit that you know, super chiasmatic nucleus pathway. As I'm sitting there, I'll take my inner ear temperature as my body temperature has dropped five degrees Fahrenheit over the past few years. So taking morning body temperature is a good way to check how well your thyroid functioning is or how well your thyroid is functioning. And so typically you wanna be as close to 37 degrees Celsius as possible. The lower you are, the slower your metabolism in a sense. Here's given metabolic efficiencies. Then I'll do a body composition measurement, looking at fat, muscle, hydration, weight, arterial stiffness using a smart scale. I'll then apply a hair serum, massage my scalp for one to two minutes. Hopefully that hair serum doesn't contain any finasteride. You guys know my thoughts on this dangerous DHT blocker. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may wanna check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. One to two minutes and wear a red light hair cap for six minutes. I'll do a breathing exercise or meditation for five minutes to get my mind and body set for the day. Then I'll consume and- Personally, I don't like starting my day with a breathing activity or exercise purely based on the fact that when I do them, oftentimes I'll feel more fatigued and or like more relaxed. Whereas in the morning, I like to get up and go and start my day with a bang. Like that's usually going to train straight away or doing the hardest part of the day first. I'll consume an eight ounce drink consisting of blueprint longevity mix, collagen peptides, creatine, and some prebiotics. Next, I'll work out for 60 to 90 minutes. I will focus on strength, cardio, flexibility, and balance. While working out, I'll rotate listening to music, books, pod. Some people say they feel stronger in the afternoon or evening, particularly for like weight training. Personally, I also like to do my workouts first thing in the morning as well, but I'll typically do my workouts fasted just with like my usual supplements. Podcasts. On the weekends, I'll play pickleball, ride a bike, climb, hang out with friends. Next, for breakfast, I will have Blueprint Longevity Protein and Berry Nut Mix, Collagen Peptides, Extra Virgin Olive Oil, and 100% Pure Cacao. I just did a post on Extra Virgin Olive Oil as it associates to uh, specific longevity pathways. So uh, on my Instagram, make sure you've checked that out. It's a pretty cool post. With a few dozen pills. 
After breakfast, I will squeeze in a few additional therapies. Daily, I do red and near infrared light therapy, six minutes a day. Currently, I have two additional therapies. One is hyperbaric oxygen therapy, and second is focused shockwave therapy. Personally, I've been using hyperbaric oxygen therapy now for the past two months, and I'm a big fan. I really do respond well to HBOT therapy. Which I'm doing for my entire body, first in world. Next, I will jump into the shower, wash my face, apply. Hopefully that shower, uh, the shower head is, uh, has a water filter to, to clear out any toxins in the um, water supply. Apply moisturizer and vitamin C, and then two to three times a week, I will exfoliate with a Japanese washcloth. At this point in the morning, I'm feeling pretty good. I've had a fantastic night's sleep. Just, uh, could you imagine how long this morning routine would take the average person? I mean, it would probably take up like three to four hours. And most people just don't have that sort of time. I've fully exercised. I've had a nutritious breakfast. I'm now going to step outside and do a 10 minute walk in the sun. It feels fantastic on my skin. Now I'm mindful of the time. Big fan of morning sunlight exposure. Um, that's something that I try and practice as well. Time I'm out when the UV index is low, where I still get the stimulation and benefits of the sun, but without the damage. After this, my work day begins, and it's my favorite part of the entire day because my morning hours are my best hours. I'm open-minded, I'm creative, I'm fast, and so I prioritize the hardest tasks in this window of time. <laughs> that's literally what I said before about prioritizing the hard tasks first. That is exactly what I try and do as well because I find if I'm trying to do the harder tasks at like 2, 3, 4, 5 p.m., then the quality of my output is just nowhere near as good. So I try and really maximize the first four to six hours of every day in terms of productivity. Now in my office, my desk and chair are situated. So I've got the exact same treadmill standing desk. I'm a big fan of walking whilst working. I can rotate between sitting and standing, always maintaining proper posture. I find this to be useful because moving about increases blood flow, which increases my alertness. After the first few hours of the day, actually it looks like he doesn't have a treadmill below him, but yeah, personally I have a treadmill underneath a desk like this. Of hard focus, I will have my next meal of the day, typically something like super veggie, which is a mixture of lentils, broccoli, cauliflower, mushrooms, hemp seeds, garlic, and ginger. Not a fan of uh, a meal like this. I prefer to have like a, a steak, some eggs, you know, some meat or fish, things like that. I'm not a huge fan of some of these veggies. I think they're problematic for most people. They can irritate the gut and there's just there actually isn't a huge amount of nutrient value from these veggies. Immediately following eating super veggie, I will jump back in into focused work. Every 30 minutes, I'll do roughly five minutes of light activities, such as walking or body weight exercises, stretching. I find that it makes me more flexible of mind and of body. An hour and a half or two hours later, I will have my final meal of the day, which will be some combination of- Hang on a second, did he just say final meal of the day at 11 a.m.? Honestly, I would never be able to do this. This would be such a struggle. Yeah, this is just not practical. Who's gonna finish their last meal at 11 a.m.? Combination of veggies, nuts, seeds, and berries. For example, I might have a stuffed sweet potato with avocado, tomatoes, chickpeas, with a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. My daily caloric intake is 2,250 calories, which is made up of 25% protein, 35% carbs, and 40% fat. It is pretty well balanced, but I would skew that more towards protein and higher on the carbs and lower on the fats. Personally, if I'm trying to optimize thyroid and testosterone, typically what I see guys doing wrong is they're, particularly around hormone optimization, is they're going too low on the carbs and they're going too high on the fats. Really, we wanna actually be optimizing the, the carbohydrate intake and also the protein and lowering the fat intake. Note that I am plant-based by choice, excluding the collagen peptides. After my final meal of the day, I will get back into work. And as I did before, every 30 minutes or so, I will- Look guys, I just can't imagine finishing my last meal at 11 a.m. Most people that I know actually have their first meal at 10 or 11 a.m. That's personally what I would do. So I will do five minutes of light activity, which helps with blood flow, awaken my mind, and keep my body loose and flexible. The liquid I drink throughout the day is mineralized, either via tea or electrolytes. I will stop drinking liquids around 4 p.m. to avoid getting up at night to go to the bathroom. Again, another thing there, most people would not stop drinking until after like 6, 7, 30 p.m. I mean, to stop drinking at 4 p.m., 
I would find that, again, extremely challenging because I'd get so thirsty at like seven or eight o'clock at night. So my day is filled with endless activities. What a lot of people don't realize is I am currently the operating CEO of several endeavors, including Blueprint, Don't Die. My longevity protocol is a full-time job. I am a content creator and I am a father. My favorite part of what I do, no day is ever the same. Now, as the end of day arrives, I have been working nonstop the entire day. I need to wind down. This process commences with me taking a 10 minute walk outside. I'll spend time with friends and family, and then I'll do something like read a book, meditate, do breath work, something to calm. I am a fan of having a, a routine wind down practice. I think that does help with the onset of sleep and also the quality of our sleep as well. My body down. I'll turn screens off. I'll try to stop messaging or view social media. Nighttime mode is activated. Now I know from achieving the best sleep score in human history, eight months of perfect sleep, that the single strongest predictor of my nighttime sleep quality is my resting heart rate. Everything I do is to lower the beats per minute of my heart. The lower I go, the better my sleep. At 8.30, my head will hit the pillow and I will be asleep within one to three minutes. On any given night, I will average over two hours of REM, two hours of deep, and I will be up less than 30 minutes a night. These are the markers of exceptional sleep. So two hours of REM and two hours of deep, that is a pretty substantial amount of restorative and you know high quality sleep. Typically what I'm aiming for is about an hour and a half of REM sleep and two hours of deep sleep. And there's a bunch of different supplements and protocols and peptides that I've tried and experimented with that has made an impact on my overall sleep quality. Make sure you check out the sleep playlist on my YouTube channel. There's some pretty good sleep hacks there. And then my favorite part of the entire thing, I know I get to do the same thing tomorrow. Life is amazing. So that pretty much wraps up Brian Johnson's 2025 longevity protocol. I'd love to hear from you guys. Leave a comment down below to share your thoughts on his particular protocol. And as always, thanks for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.